Okay, this is a video on how we created this uh, trade show booth, which we built out of styrofoam uh, as a core, and then we put a high-strength fiber reinforced cement over the top of it, but it was for a guy who does trade shows with jewelry, so we made a bunch of rocks with shelves and ledges, and he could put his stuff on. Anyway, this is a video where we're going to step you through it real quick. And what we've done here is we have one block, four by four by eight, and we've cut it to where it's a... Uh, a little bit more than a foot it's about 14 inches almost and uh, six foot tall and what we've done is we've glued it together and we just use this spray foam what you do is you've got your pieces apart you just sit there and put some of this on smash the two pieces together pull them apart let them sit for about five minutes and then tack them back together and I'm not kidding you this stuff is strong stronger than the original bond of the foam but that's that's how we glue them. Now as far as this booth, this is one of these trade show booths. What we're going to do is have a three-piece system. The guy that we're making this for does a lot of trade shows. And this right now is going to be a 10 foot wide by 5 foot out. Then we're making two more panels that will go another 5 foot out. So he can do a 5 by 10 or a 10 by 10. The inside of this is just going to be carved. And then we're going to put the fiber reinforced mode over the top of it carve on the outside it's on top of that and it's still going to be very lightweight and easy to maneuver all right we thought we'd show you real quick we had to cut a little piece off so we've got this battery down here just a regular 12 volt truck battery and, and I use it to put two jumper cables on there or a big wire we use the jumper cables because we got them now Skyler on the right's got a uh, a cable and Sheck on the left and what Sheck just did was hook it together and they're holding it, and you can see that wire starting to get hot now. And it just cuts the foam like uh, like butter. Now, the what we use in between there is a smaller gauge wire. It's just a bailing wire, and that will allow you to cut. Now, this does not get super hard, nor does it smoke a lot. Your wire length on this needs to be at least say four foot. If you start doing it with a too small of a wire the battery gets the wire too hot. This works fine though and then at night we just charge out the battery and we've always got it on hand ready to cut foam. Slick it's not, huh? Okay, these are some stencils I made a couple years back and I just drew some rock out and I cut in between each rock leaving just a little tab you can see them every so often and that's something that we can lay any direction we want flipping it over whatever but your pattern doesn't repeat and it's easy to spray paint it all on. right so i've got the stencils laid on the foam and um this makes it really quick instead of just hand drawing you just spray paint in between the the rocks now where there's two sheets or two pan, uh, templates laying together here it's not going to be perfect you're going to have to touch that up in between the two sheets but this overall produces a very fast way of drawing out rocks instead of just hand drawing them and you see now i'm correct in between the two sheets and you know now you're ready to go the next step is to simply start carving in between each boulder to start the about a two inch depth and uh, he's just using a little uh, body tool which is like a rasp and it's it's one way of doing it this other way is where you see us using the knife well you don't see us using the knife but i can tell from the look of it he took the hot knife and basically did the same removal of about two inches of material Okay, the next stage of this, this guy is taking a, a knife, a steel knife, and putting it into the torch and then carving out more of the boulder or the rock shapes. And uh, there's a lot of ways that we've used to profile foam into the rock that we're looking to make. And the list is long. I mean, I have a chainsaw that's an electric one. I've got the hot knife that I'm going to show you here momentarily. But this is just what we did at the time to make it all work out. And it was fast and easy. Okay, in this clip, I purchased this knife, this electric hot knife, about 25 years ago, and I could count the times I use it on my on my run hand here. Uh, it's not hot enough. I mean, they make it to where you know you'd have to push hard to get it to go through. In comparison to the hot knife that we do with the torch, this thing just isn't worth it. But again, a lot of tools out there that you can use. I thought I'd take a second and just go over some of the tools I use. So there's one, two, three, four, five saws on this table. So starting from the top left, the yellow 
sawzaw. Then there's a handheld saw. Below that is a little red handle uh, uh, drywall saw, which I love to use. And then below that's a little back pull, a Japanese back pull saw. And then that little saw there that came out of one of my kids' play toys, tool toys. But anyway, I'm not seeing the hot knife that's electrical that we just used in the video here a little bit ago, nor am I seeing my chainsaw. So I thought I would start out with a chainsaw. Here's Skyler just whipping through some of the bigger cuts. You really can't get too fine with this. I'm sure there's guys out there that can, but this thing will cut some foam like real quick. Next to that's all the other saws, but this video clip, you're going to see me using that, that little drywall saw. That's really my favorite tool for getting fine and coarse movement where I can take off a lot really quick. Okay, got two panels here. Uh, the one on the right has had two steps. First, the little uh, two-inch removal between each rock and then the hot knife where you cut off more. And then the one panel on the left has now been rasped with a you know a tool that allows us to further shape it you can see the bottom of this left panel is not yet finished so that's kind of where we're at right now okay just a little more profiling in between each rock and notice how he's cutting in the field area there trying to give it a little bit of look now then we see kind of where we're at slowly moving forward on the carving and then i'm starting to put the signage on top of the uh the booth power of stones are the two stop signs and then it's and the smaller sign in the center that says designs by andrew these will be carved in you know as far as the the shapes of the letters are going to be carved in after you'll see at the end and it's it's just what he asked us to put on here and again now we're back to kind of the guys working it my daughter-in-law is in the center that's my older son skyer's wife but uh it's just a matter of staying with the carving. You know, you're going to carve this to where the detail that you want is in the foam because the, the cement that we're going to put on this is a quarter inch coverage of a fi high strength fiber reinforced cement. So again, it's imperative that you're, you're carving this foam. You've got the shapes because you're not going to get further definition mud from the shape. Uh, or further definition in the shape from the mud being applied for the structural coat. We also splatter on a coat, which we don't show in this video. But again, this is just the carving section here to say, here's here's the shapes that I want. We're going to fiber mud over it. Then we texture over it. Then we stain and seal. And again, I don't have those in this video footage. I just found this video footage because this was in 2003. We're in 2025 now. And this is uh, just something I found by accident in my files, and I was like, well, I'm going to try and make a video. Here we've got the first two panels mudded, and then we're going to let them dry and then turn them over the next day to mud the backside because we couldn't mud the backside. It was on the table. This is the third panel, which is being mudded today. And again, when he gets done, we'll let it sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll be flipping it over. But again, if you watch this video clip, you can see what I'm talking about with the fiber mud. It's a quarter inch in thickness and it's bulletproof. It is not, it's something that could, you take a baseball bat to it and not harm it. High strength fiber reinforced cement. It's really a composite. You can cut this with a regular skill saw, wood bit and or drill it or tool it with wood uh, type tools. So it's a composite. It's cementitious, but that's not like a mortar or concrete at any rate um now he's got that done so the the panels are all done on the first side the upside and then the next day here we're going to be or actually this may be the next day i'm trying to think from the video yeah this was dried already this is the panel that was on the ground that sheck was working on in the last video clip it's dried overnight they're now working on the two panels that are on the table they flipped them over and are mudding the back to finish it again i think we do take some time to knock down some of the hair the fiber before we texture it which again you're not going to see in this video and that's unfortunate but there are a lot of videos on my channel that you can watch where we're doing the fiber mud and we're doing the the, the knockdown of it and we're doing the texture and the staining this again just something i found in my files and i wanted to throw it out it's kind of a neat little project uh that we made for this trade show booth but uh if you have any questions on, on any of this videos or any of my videos online, uh, just give me a call. My description number, my phone number is in the description area, and it's always a pleasure to serve. So this is uh, the end of this. Now we're seeing the uh, finished, except for the signs. That's the only thing that's not finished, but it's all, you know, mudded. I don't think in this video it's textured, 
but or stained obviously we're going to get to that i've got a one really bad crappy photo of it done that i took off of a brochure and it's really grainy but anyway the power of stones booth all completed and uh or or mudded anyway and uh just thought that this was kind of a neat little video to make uh, for my YouTube channel. And I apologize for it not being perfect. And again, the photo of this finished booth here is really bad, but it's stained and sealed and out the door it went. We made this guy another kiosk. We made rock for a kiosk, so it wasn't a trade show booth. It was some rock that he displayed jewelry on. There was rocks on the bottom and then a big, huge rock on top and then one on each side. And you can see jewelry hung from that. I also decided to throw that uh, Michigan rock that was in the background. You see me here with it. It's just a, a hollow rock that we made for a customer, Custom. Uh, he was a Michigan fan, and so we made it. And I'm just turning it around here to show you the different profiles. We made a lot of different, uh, what we call cardboard rock at that time, but... Uh, it was something we did with address or name or, or logo or whatever. I've got a hundred of them in my uh, photograph imagery. And then Skyer's just painting on the blue and the yellow right now. But if you guys need something, always remember in the description area, my phone number, give me a call. My email's in there. Thanks a lot. Please subscribe, like, share, whatever it is you do. Thanks.